Good evening, everyone. My name is Desiree Tewitt. I am your moderator for tonight's show, The Truth About Home Health Care. I have with me today, Ms. Lorna King-Bob. Lorna is one of the co-founders of Live Well Pathway and also the executive director of care and education there. Lorna is the RN, BSc, and a master's in education. Lots of talent, lots of information. When I first met Lorna, I remember her sharing her story with me and she had me overwhelmed. I meet so many people in, in my capacity of being a senior real estate specialist that I thought, let's put together a group and let's share. Everyone has questions, everyone wants to know more, everyone has stories they want to sell, they want to tell, sorry. So today we will sit down with Lorna and we'll find out more about what what's her passions, what drove her here to the point she is right now. Lorna, tell us a little bit more about yourself. What is your story? My story is that um, seeing seniors neglect and the need that seniors do have. I just want to be a part of that package to educate and take care of seniors so that they can have fun before they die. Okay. And what led you, what led you here? Like what, what is, tell us a little bit more about your background. Well, I've been a nurse for, in England really. And then when I came here, I went to university and pursue further education, academia. Mm -hmm. And now I am on a platform wherein I do seminars and educate seniors how to better advocate for their loved ones. And also I do seminars because I want my healthcare business to be stronger and to have a difference. So I educate seniors, I educate my workers as well, so that seniors can have the best care. I even do one support um, with um, seniors um, to prevent seniors burnout. Mm -hmm. I do that support system for, well, for them as well, to educate them on what is necessary and the, the extent you can go to advocate for your loved ones. Right, and this is something very important, especially as we're seeing that the the aging demographics is growing. Yes. There's actually more older people than there are younger people. So baby boomers. Baby boomers are aging, and this is definitely a topic at hand that needs to be discussed. Now, Lorna, you describe nursing as your oxygen. That is such a passionate way to, to describe what you do. I mean, we all know oxygen is what we need for life. So how is nursing your oxygen? I have a passion for nursing, and I think it's because when my grandmother was dying, I was the one who passionately took care of my grandmother, prayed with her until she died at the age of 93. And I used to do a program in, um, it's just, um, it's the community center in um, Shoban. And I see the need for people to be aware of the our seniors lack. And because of all of this and my helping others to leave a, lead a better, healthy life, it just gives me more compassion for them and more reward. So this is why I do seminars to educate seniors so they can advocate for themselves and their loved ones. Yes. And it's, it's funny, like I said before, I go around and I meet so many people in so many different fields within this industry. But when I really connect with someone where I see they're sharing the same passion with me, it's someone that I definitely have to work with and, and, and be, become a team almost with yes. them so that we can work with the same amount of passion, that the treatment is consistent from person to person, service to service. Now, you've been referred to as a top nurse. That's also a big title, top nurse. I think it's because of the dedication. I put myself, my whole self, into the care I give to my patients, my clients. I'll give you an example. I had a client at um, Oakville Trafalgar, and the nurse who was taking care of that client did not know I was dropping in to see what was going on. So when I came in the room, I didn't like the way my patient looked. So therefore, I said to her, let's bath my patient. And I showed her, personally, I bath the patient, do skin care on him, reposition him. And honestly, Des, in no time, that patient was quietly sleeping, comfortably, and the family came in just about a couple of minutes after we've done that. And I turned to the nurse, 
this is how I like to see my patient because what you're doing for yourself, this could be your mother in the bed. And when the family came in, the first remark was, oh, dad looks so peaceful. You do not know what that did to my heart. Satisfaction, mm -hmm. guaranteed. Guaranteed. And this is one of the stories you've told me when we first met. And I said, we have to discuss it because that, that story just, it warmed my heart. And I'm going to take things a little bit off to the side. This is not structured. It's not scripted. Okay. So in saying that, do you, what would you recommend to people who think that they already have a loved one in a retirement residence or in, in any type of, uh, of care system? Would you still recommend that they bring in someone from outside? I think it's called top-up care yeah. to, to make sure they get that enhanced experience. What's your opinion on that? Well, um, if you've got somebody in a facility, whether it's a retirement home or a long-term care, sometimes you need that extra care because those PSWs, they've got eight patients to look after. So you can't expect top care to your loved one. So when you, you hire someone to come in, they're going to be doing that mobility effectively, that range of motion exercise to see that mom eats well, because remember, she needs health. So she has to eat well. So they will even feed her to see that mom gets a proper bath. Sometimes they only bath them once a week. So if mom wants her bath, when it's not her bath day, there you have someone to give mom the bath, clip her nails, and just talk with mom to keep her intelligence intact and prevent dementia. Mm -hmm. Dementia, that's a topic we're going to come back to in a little while. But we've heard a little bit about Lauren, and I'm pretty sure you can all feel the passion that I'm feeling from hearing her story so far. If anyone has any questions, remember, feel free to just type it in. We'll take your questions live. Otherwise, I'm going to continue sitting here talking with Lorna. Now, Lorna, you are a co-founder of a company called Live Well Pathway. The name sounds like it, it has so, many, so much depth to it. Tell us more about uh, Live Well Pathway and how you came upon with, with the name. I am one of the co-founders of Live Well Pathway. And just that phrase, pathway, shows the various pathway to good health, be it respite care, be it home care, be it health care where you've got a colostomy, enteral fees, a tracheostomy tube, all that we do, be it palliative care, be it hospice care, be it retirement in getting someone in the retirement home or in a facility, we cover it all. And these are the many pathways to good health or dying in comfort with soon. Yes. And what type of services do you provide with Live Well Pathway? We provide home care services as well as health care services. Health care services is on the advanced scale where it's clinical care, where you've got the RN and the RPN. They come in to give injections, IV therapy, trait care, colostomy care, some of the other care that I've alluded to earlier. And the home care, that's where you've got a companion. You might have a loved one with Alzheimer's. So she walks them, plays puzzle with them, do arts and crafts with them, exercises with them, and do personal hygiene, some housekeeping, and a, a little shopping as well for them. So with the home care, is it a requirement that the person has to be sick or ill or can it just be something that you have a mom who lives by herself a mom or dad who live by themselves and they don't have much companionship so is this something you can bring in just to ensure that they're comfortable and they have the com company yes some people because mom is by herself it's the safety component because now mom has a device so they want someone to prevent isolation because isolation leads to depression, which leads to dementia. So it's to keep mom's brain intact by keeping mom active and alert and safe and to make sure mom eats and mom is doing well. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we keep coming across the topic of dementia and Alzheimer's. So I'm going to just segue a little bit from Live Well Pathway. Let's talk about dementia and Alzheimer's. I think so many people use it as one in, in one sentence when really there, there's differences. So can you please educate us on what the differences are between the two? Okay. Dementia is an overall term 
for a set of symptoms um, that you, you manifest, be it um, judgment, an impairment in your judgment, an impairment in your cognition, in your ability of taking care of your activity of daily living, whether it's brushing your teeth, having your personal hygiene or anything like that. So dementia is a symptom. Some of the things that can cause dementia is um, a metabolic imbalance, a vitamin B deficiency, a hypothyroidism, that means your thyroid is low production, or an infection, something of that sort. So when you're treated, when that deficiency is treated by your doctor giving you, after you've taken your blood work, he sees where your vitamin B12 is very low, he then gives you vitamin B12 injection. So that now lifts those symptoms that you are presenting. And then dementia now is a disease process. It's a degenerative um, neurological disease process. It, there's no cure for that. But when you have Alzheimer's disease, which is the degeneration, is that you have cognition impairment, you've got judgment impairment, speech, communication, confusion, and the list goes on. So what I'm saying in short is that dementia could also be caused by a tumor in the brain resting on your temporal lobe, which controls your memory and causing you to have gaps in your communication. But once that's treated or removed, those symptoms are lifted. So in other words, dementia is the umbrella. And under, demen under dementia, you've got Parkinson's disease, you've got Alzheimer's disease, you've got lower, lower body disease, you've got Huntington's disease, um, Jacob Critzfield disease, and the list goes on. Okay. So with that being said, when you first come into a home, do you do a consultation to see if the person is exhibiting any of these things? Or how do you go about identifying your client's needs and, and providing it for them? Excellent question. Because when we, I do not send anyone into that home unless I myself or one of my other nurses go in and do a total assessment from head to toe on that patient to see the patient mobility, if he uses a device, his awareness, cognition, um, his needs, and some patients, because we are so diverse, some patients do have peculiar needs, and we try to kind of uh, line them up with someone who can match them, mm -hmm. as it were. So we do a total assessment, we hear them out, we hear what their needs are, and then we make a care plan, a comprehensive care plan, and we incorporate all of those so that when that person goes out, she gets an in-service from me, an awareness. And most of the time, we try to go with that nurse or that PSW or the healthcare worker to the home and introduce them to that patient or that client and just let them get their, their self aware and then we leave. Okay. Do you work on, alongside the family physician? Yes, in that clinical, when they need clinical care, mm -hmm. we do collaborate with the specialty, whatever specialty, whether it's physiotherapy, whether it's a specialist, whatever needs mm -hmm. that they we do in because they need to be ongoing assessment in case there is any anything that needs any adverse effects from the treatment they're getting so that we can call the doctor and make him aware because sometimes you need to change that antibiotic because the, the fever persists. So we just have an RA who keeps on daily assessment and talking to the doctor as to what's going on with that client and what the complaints are from the client. And sometimes we do 24 hour, 24 seven in that capacity, because as you can see, that patient needs closer observation, more in-depth care mm -hmm. because of the capacity she's in. Now, when you hear 24 hour care, the first thing that goes up in most people's mind is that's expensive. A lot of people think that 
24 hour nursing care in the home is, is for the wealthy. Is that a misconception or is it actually not as expensive as we think? Health is wealth. Money cannot pay for health. We've got people who are awfully rich and would like to have a kidney, but that money can't get them a kidney. I'll then jump off to saying this, when we have 24 seven care, I would like that person to say, not to say if I had known, do not let money limit your loved ones. Sometimes what we do though, if you do keep us on an ongoing basis, we do drop the price to accommodate your financial needs. And we try to make it affordable. So we do talk with our loved ones as to what their deficiencies are. And we do try to accommodate. And sometimes they've got insurance, which comes into play and that helps to buffer what the shortcomings are. And that's actually leading into my next question. Do you accept private insurance? We do indeed. Okay. Uh, does it matter what type or it depends no. on per person? per case basis. No, we do indeed whatever insurance right. that would take us. Right. We are there, we are obliged. Right. Now, with the wealth of knowledge that you have, are you ever sometimes introduced to a potential uh, client or patient by from the doctor's side, from the medical side? Yes. Or does it usually come from the family? No, sometimes. Well, because now I'm a part of Trillium Health Partners and other facilities, they do tell me about patients, but I've got doctors, doctors, offices, physicians who would refer, they call me and say, Lauren, I've got a patient such and such, and then I'll follow up with them and do my assessment, you know, and get them help. Yes. Right. Right. Because they, they sometimes need help over and above CCSC because it's not sufficient. And I think sometimes we all look at finances. Yes, we should do. But at the same time, the suffering that your loved one is going through, never leave yourself open to that guilt. If you can do better financially, yes. If you can help him to enjoy or have a better life, in the end, we're here for you. Yes. And, and that is something that I, I preach daily is that we don't want to think about getting sick. No one wants to get sick. No. We all want to be healthy. But life happens. And when it happens, have a plan in place. Yes. Research your options. Be aware of an option for home care, such as what Lauren is providing, what Live Well Pathway is providing. Uh, with Live Well Pathway, what is your coverage area? Well, we do, we do um, Mississauga, Brampton, and the GTA. We also have another site in Ajax. Mm -hmm. um, so we are extending as we go. We, we also have clients in Oakville. So we are extending ourselves. That's our second site. Your second site as well. Ajax, yeah. Okay. And there are a lot of, of, of different healthcare companies. I won't name any, yeah. but there are ones that are more of the franchise type. Yeah. Now, my opinion when it comes to anything franchises is to maintain the consistency and the quality of service. So how would, why would someone choose Live Well Pathway over uh, a major brand name franchise? Live Well Pathway is home and healthcare with a difference. I do educate my clients as well as my loved ones so they know exactly what's going on. And sometimes I educate my um, loved ones so they can advocate or they can ask the right question when they do go to the doctors. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is that um, the reason why we're with a difference, I educate because I teach a Bachelor of Science at York and I do clinical with George Brown and... Okay and um, Centennial College. So I just bring this knowledge across to my nurses and my home, um, healthcare personnel, as well as my PSWs. And I train them so that they can have, they can extend that dignity, that respect, that commitment, that relationship. And that's why consistency in the care that I 
extend to my clients is so vital because they want to have that relationship with the same person right. all the time yes and that's one major thing I hear from a lot of people when they do have home care there can be an inconsistency in who's coming in to bathe them they never yes. know who's coming and consistency is key yes especially when you're dealing with someone older who works more on a routine basis yeah they want to know what is happening when it's happening who it's happening with you sound like you tr you try to attract people who are around the same mindset as you. Is it is it a challenge finding workers who carry the same level of uh, dedication to to their craft as you do? It is, but um, I think what I do, I gently speak to them because they have to realize whatever they do, they're going in the name of Live Well Pathway, and whatever they do affect me negatively or positively and we do have a reward system so if we get a lot of because we're getting a lot of um positive feedback from our clients so sometimes we do give a reward if it's consistently coming in we do it once a month or twice a month and we do a, re a, a reward system and i think that helps them to be more consistent in their care Okay, that is great. So, you know, there are so many misconceptions surrounding home health care. I just wanted to demystify a few of them, if I may. So a lot of people think it's better if, if they take care of an aging person at home or someone who's ill at home themselves. What is your opinion on that for a family member to take care of their aging loved ones? Well, I think um, they feel that they can do a better care than the person they hire. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes I think they should step back a bit from the situation. It's too close for comfort. But I find there's a lot of um, caregiver burnout. Mm -hmm. And I find caregivers suffer from, it's a state of mental, physical, and emotional um problems that they do experience and this sometimes cause them to change that love caring attitude the ones have for their loved one the attitude becomes angry bitter and they're tired and fed up and more than that i find caregivers carry guilt because you promise dad or mom or vice versa you'll never put them in a nursing home but sometimes if they do have Alzheimer's that require that safety so they do not wander and the expense account, you might eventually have to put them there, especially when you can't get them to eat and they require other in-depth medical treatment. So it's a guilt and you would rather be with dad than be with your friends having a dinner or taking in a movie or even going to a doctor's appointment. So in this case, they become burnt out where they're now taking alcohol, they're on medication, their health is deteriorating and it's just a kaleidoscope of health deterioration. And I think with caregivers, do not be afraid to say yes to help. Never say no. You cannot do it alone. And you do not have the expertise. Mm -hmm. give, give it to the, the nurses and the healthcare aid who have been trained to do this so that you can do something else with mom. Yes. Tell her how much you love her. Do scrabble and yes. activities with mom. You're still participating. Yes. I've actually heard that from a client whereby he said when he was busy, having to come to, to help take care of his parents, he found himself emptying garbage, washing dishes, vacuuming, doing tasks around the house that took away from enjoying quality time with his parents. And that when he brought in healthcare, he could actually go and enjoy his parents. Like exactly. he said, sit there, watch a good show, reminisce. But you're not no longer feeling that you love them, but you're not feeling that, 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 that uh, I don't know what the right word is for it, that resentment almost yes. for having to now do this. And also, as parents, you know, we, especially from the older school, I don't think we want our children having to change our diapers and do things like that. So it's also maintaining a certain level of uh, independence as well mm -hmm. and, and uh, that, that they want to have as well. Now, do you think that bringing in health care as well is a little bit challenging for the person on the receiving end, as in they feel like they're losing some independence by having to now get help? 
is it, is it easy for them to accept or is there some type of... Well, if somebody's falling off the bed yeah. or is incontinent of urine and stool, mm -hmm. I think they would like some help mm -hmm. because they of themselves, they know they cannot take care of themselves. They know the potential that's there. They cannot, they cannot take care of their activity of daily living. Mm -hmm. So this is where they would need help. And sometimes you might have... Because of diversity, they would like somebody mm -hmm. of the opposite sex. For example, female would like a female and a yes. male would like a male. And you've got to really ask this question mm -hmm. so that you're pleasing them. And mm -hmm. sometimes they resent it because of the inconsistency as well. But if they're incontinent and a filthy, they would need somebody because that's their dignity, for goodness sake, yeah. that we're taking away from them. Do not let money rob you of letting your family member enjoy that dignity, that love, that relationship, that commitment, that ability to ask questions and to have someone put their arms around them and say, I care. I care. That is such a, a deep statement that goes so far someone saying I care and not letting the money get in the way. I can't believe it was from you. I heard someone say to me though, touching on uh, don't ever, as kids, don't ever promise your parents that you will not put oh, them yes. into a residence or into a care facility because you don't know what's being dished out and you're making a promise that truthfully you cannot keep. Well, we do not know what tomorrow holds. Yeah. And when you make that promise, we do not know what sickness or disease awaits us. So therefore, that's a big, that's a big promise. That's deep. And if you cannot, because you're setting yourself up for failure, because if you can't maintain that promise, that guilt, that guilt mm -hmm. would stay with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Lorna, you have so much information on that. I'm, I'm definitely, you have to come back again because I can talk to you for hours. Uh, how would someone get in contact with you if they were interested in finding out more about your services? You can call Live Well Pathway or me personally at 647-669-4221 or Live Well Pathway 1-855-274-274. Um, 905-492-5900. Remember, we've got a site in Mississauga, Oakville, Brampton, and the GTA, as well as in Ajax. Yes. Everyone, thank you again. This has been Lorna King Bob on the show with us today, talking about home health care and so much more. Anyone who knows me knows this is a topic that I'm very passionate about. I am a realtor, but I'm, a, I'm your senior real estate specialist. I am here to consult with you, to confide with you, and to introduce you to people like Lorna, who I know once she comes into the picture, you will be in good hands. We have, we'll, we'll be airing the show, the Senior Living 411 series as well. We've coined it as 411 is in the Senior Living Information. We're here to give information, to educate, and to encourage people to be proactive, not reactive. Mm -hmm. The show will be airing every second Sunday of the month uh, at 8 p.m. for half an hour, 8 p.m. to 8.30. We will start on time. We finish on time. And we'll be talking to different people. Next week, we'll be talking to someone from a home maintenance and management company where, again, Andy from Andy Taylor from home from Andel Maintenance and Management, amazing guy. Can't wait to speak with him. Love having Lauren here. Laura, is there any final words that you want to say to people who are listening to this this whole topic that we're discussing today? Home care is the name of the game. If you can afford it for your loved one, don't hesitate. We can discuss affordability, twenty four seven, seven days a week. Live well pathway. It's the name of the game. We would love to take care of your loved ones and we'll do it royally. Thank you kindly. I don't have to say anything else. That spoke for itself. Thank you, Lorna. And I look forward to seeing you all again. Have a blessed and wonderful week. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you. Bye. How did I do? Excellent.